Um, we had a stroke of inspiration this morning. So we've actually got kind of a week long series of things that are all gonna build on each other for you guys. And then you guys could potentially, if you're nearby, get, get an order in and play along as the week goes on. So hi, Leah here. Um, like I said, uh, this week I have, I have a whole week's worth of videos planned out. Um, we're gonna walk you guys through an entire applique project from start to finish. Um, so we're going to break it up into little manageable chunks every day and lots of tips and tricks throughout the week. So today we're going to talk about the supplies you might need to do a little applique project and gather, gather your goods together and figure out what you're going to stitch. Um, and then we'll talk about cutting your applique because that'll be the next thing to do after you have all your supplies. Um, we're going to do that a couple different ways mostly focus on the scanning cut. Um, we'll talk about fusing and fusibles. Um, we're gonna talk about stitching because some applique has just machine stitching and some has some hand work in it or a combination of the above. Um, and we're also gonna finish up the week with, with hanging your finished little wall hanging on the wall. So it's a, it's a come in every day for little chunks of information kind of week. It'll all build on the same thing. So um, even if you're not huge into doing applique, um, I'm sure you'll gain some valuable knowledge every day. Mm -hmm. um, so all these beautiful patterns are from a company called Patchabilities. And Patchabilities, they make like the most ridiculously cute little patterns. And they do kind of some table runners. So this guy might make appearance, an appearance later this week. And they have really skinny little wall hangings that would um, hang nicely on a front door or on a weird bit of hallway wall. All those places where you could have art if you had something the right size. This isn't undertaking a bed quilt. You could stitch a whole bunch of these together and turn it into a bed quilt. Um, but little manageable projects, um, test the waters, try applique. Love the farm one. Oh, the farm one's so cute. Um, this lemonade one, somebody mentioned that one, fresh lemonade. It's kind of like a little bigger than a placemat. It's a wall hanging, it's a placemat. It, it's a table mat. It's whatever it wants to be. There's this watermelon one. Ice cold watermelon, little table runner. So we've got lots and lots of these. I'm not gonna show you all of them today because that would take all the fun out of the rest of the week. Um, but these are, these are like the perfect size to try applique because you're not committed to, not committed to a big project, committed to a manageable size project. <clears throat> so this farm one was actually a seasonal series of patterns. So this is the fall farm. So you've got those lovely little pumpkins in there. And this is probably big enough to be a pillow, like a, it's probably the size of a bed pillow. And if you added borders differently, you could probably fit one of those uh, really great bench pillows that we normally have in stock. But the farm guy is a series. So there's summer on the farm, spring on the farm, winter on the farm, and there's the pattern for that. So this is finished in one day, but I'm gonna draw this out and make it take all week. So the other thing that came in when these patterns came in is new hangers. So you can see along the top of that is um, a fancy metal doodah. That's a quilt hanger. So we got some great new quilt hangers in from Patchabilities. This one's big, but it fits across the whole top, just like that. just finishes up your piece and then you leave this in one spot and change out change out your seasons as you go so they come in a different couple different sizes to fit um, what patchability most commonly uses for their sizes aren't they great they're so much fun so much fun but anyway back to what we're doing this week all the applique so we're gonna talk about all the things you might need to do applique and 
some of the things I would start with right off the bat. Um, we'll demo this later this week. But for building out some of these appliques with lots of lots of pieces that need to line up, like flowers coming out of a pot and flowers on that bird feeder. Um, an applique pressing sheet is going to be totally your friend so you can get your applique layered uh, using your pattern sheet, and making sure your pumpkins are aligned properly. So this comes in a couple different sizes. Buy the size that works the best for your house and your budget. So those will be really useful. Um, you, could, you could buy fancy scissors mm -hmm. to cut your applique. Uh, Karen K. Buckley's scissors, they've got a little micro serrated edge on them and they're amazing for cutting little little tiny bits of fabric. If you have to cut all these little pumpkin shapes out by hand, you'll want scissors that are going to behave really nicely for you. So Karen K. Buckley has a couple different sizes and her, her scissors are awesome for applique cutting. Um, the other thing you might need to hold this all together while you get started sewing is um, some sort of fusible web. So this is what I'm going to talk about first today. So part one, grabbing your supplies. After you pick a pattern, pick a pattern, find your fabric. The next thing you'll need is some um, fusible of some sort. So there's a few different types on the market and a few different price points and a few different reasons why you might use one type over another. Um, so fusible products, uh, it's really, 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 really key when you're using any sort of fusible to read the directions really carefully. Um, they all behave really differently and require a different amount of heat and steam um, when you're applying them to your fabric. So just because you know how the one you've always used works, don't assume that the next one you buy works the same. When you're buying a fusible off the bolt, um, buy enough that you get a set of instructions with it. So this is Wonder Under. And buy instruction, make sure you get enough that you get instructions in a language you understand. So Wonder Under um, is a really lovely choice for a fusible. Um, it's a paper-backed fusible, so what that means when you're looking at it, there's a, there's a papery side. You can either draw on that side if you're doing applique the traditional way of where you trace your pieces and then cut them. Um, but it's a really, really thin web of glue that's on this paper side. So you can fuse it twice. Really thin, almost sheer glue there. Wonder Under is very thin, it's very soft. It's not gonna, it's not gonna make your uh, project crunchy, even if you get a, a fair number of layers and it's not gonna add a whole bunch of bulk that will make your sewing machine angry. Um, so Wonder Under, has kind of a reasonably high melting point. Um, it needs a bit of time with a hot iron. The key information, wonder under. Rough side, that's the side with the glue. Put, you, put that on the wrong side of the fabric. Press for five to eight seconds with hot dry iron. Let it cool. So those are the, those are the key things to be watching for when you're reading instructions on your fusible products. So hot dry iron for this one, and it will be your friend. And then the paper backing will come off, and then you'll be able to uh, press it a second time onto your um, backing in your applique. So Wonder Under is a nice option. The other one we've got. Demaseam two. So this is also a paper backed. But it's actually got two sides of paper. A little, little bit different here. This stuff is kind of like pressure sensitive. So it's sticky right away. And then it's also fusible. So very different product in how it's manufactured and how it comes off the bolt. Um, but this, you can just stick your applique pieces onto it. But it's still a thin thin web of glue there that you can see stuck to my finger between the paper layers. So steam a, team, steam a seam too. Um, you'll need to steam or heat it longer when you're actually fusing it at the end. But it's, it's 
temporary. It's, it's sticky and you can move pieces around on it. So very, very different application than, than uh, the Wonder Under, where the Wonder Under is gonna stay stuck to that first piece of fabric. This allows you to do some more stuff like the collage where you might need to pick a piece up and move it around, but hold it, hold it in where you want it in the meantime. And you're allowed to, you're allowed to do different things than what your pattern designer suggests, but understand where, reading, reading your applique patterns and understanding where you might need um, kind of a one solution fusible, like a wonder under, or where you want something where you can move things around, more like the steam a seam light two. So diff different things do different, different fusibles behave differently. Um, and don't treat them the same. Because this will not, this will not adhere a long time if you don't press it long enough. And then we have another one here that's not as commonly known, but I really, really like. Okay, so why would you need, why would you need um, these fusible products in there? Um, so these are like a two-layer glue, and what they're going to do for you is they're going to hold your applique fabric onto your backing fabric while you stitch around it. So whether it's the layers in the watermelon there. They're gonna hold all these pieces together with glue. And then you just get to sew them down. Um, none of, um, like the Wonder Under is not a permanent glue. So if you leave it hanging on your wall without stitching it, it might peel off someday. So you probably still want some, some actual stitching on there. So these, these are to, to hold your pieces in the perfect position while you get them stitched down. Other option that we have, um, very, very different, but also pretty, pretty fantastic. Um, this is not one of the commonly known ones and not, um, it's not sold on the bolt. So you buy it by packages. This is from Brother. And it's got a big, awful, complicated name. It's Iron-On Fabric Applique Contact Sheet. It's essentially a paper-backed, two-sided fusible in in more regular sewing terms um, so this one works very similar to wonder under in that you're going to fuse it onto the onto the applique piece first and then cut down your shape and then uh, take the paper backing off and um, fuse it a second time onto your background fabric um, the big difference with this and the Wonder Under is the thickness of the glue at the end. So the Wonder Under is very, very thin and just sits on the surface of your fabric and acts as a glue layer between the two layers of fabric. Um, the Brother Fusible is a much thicker, heavier glue. It takes way more heat and way more time to get it to fuse to the first fabric. And it takes way more heat and way more time to get it to fuse to the second fabric. Um, there is instructions in here, but the way they have these packaged, I can't easily sneak instructions out right now. Um, but this Brother stuff soaks deeper into the fabric. So the big advantage to that in applique is if you need to cut really, really, really skinny little pieces of fabric. Um, if you needed to cut flowers this size or leaves this size out of fabric, the Brother Fusible soaks deeper into the fabric and gives the structure, like gives the fabric structure and body, so that it doesn't f crumble into lint uh, when you cut it really small. It also leaves really, really sharp, clean edges, which some of this is raw edge um, on the applique. So, like up in here, this is a raw edge with just a straight stitch. So that gives you a really fuzzy look, and it softens things um, but if you want a really crisp edge or really skinny little letters like those ones uh, the brother fusible um, will will keep things from falling apart at that size the brother fusible can be used with a regular iron you just have to be careful um, that you're getting uh, consistent heat across the whole thing when we're talking about uh, pressing our fusibles, which I think I'll show you guys a little bit tomorrow because I'm totally not that ready for this. Made a plan. Didn't get all the, didn't get all the fusing done today. Um, it's really important when you're f fusing, you're not ironing, you're pressing. So you press and count in each spot. 
Um, a heat press is fantastic for setting this stuff, um, but not everybody has a heat press. I highly recommend you get one. They're, they're fantastic and lots of fun, but um, a regular iron, as long as you make sure you cover the whole piece and make sure everything is fused evenly, you won't have any issues. Iron on applique contact sheet, that ridiculously long name, um, soaks deeper into your fabric, giving it more structure, more body. It will be a little bit stiffer as you sew through it. Um, but for something like a wall hanging, that's usually not a, not a big deal. Uh, but you can cut way more detail with it. Brother Fusible is, is great, not, not imperative. Um, Wonder Under is significantly less pricey. So depending what I'm cutting and how big the piece is, what I need. Um, if I'm cutting big pieces and lots of batiks, Wonder Under does just fine. If I need really skinny little writing, um, then I switch to the Brother Fusible. Buy it based on what you're doing with it. Um, cutting, cutting these great big like M's out of the expensive Fusible, uh, you'd go through it pretty quick but you might be much, much happier with some of your little pieces using a sturdier interfacing. And you can mix and match. You don't have to use just one in your project. Use what's gonna make it happy. Um, the other thing you might wanna gather if you're gathering supplies for the week, um, once we actually get to stitching your applique, depending what kind of stitching you're doing, um, you'll probably want to stabilize the back of your piece with some sort of tear away stabilizer. Um, this just keeps your your piece flat while you're working and keeps it from puckering. It gives uh, strength to those stitches and keeps them from collapsing in on themselves. So even, even with something like a blanket stitch here, this will all lay much flatter when you're done if you leave, uh, if you put some stabilizer in behind it. And then for tomorrow, I'm going to show you guys how to use one of these to cut your applique. Every, everybody can, can cut with scissors, but we'll, we'll walk through how to cut with the scan and cut. So that is day one. Gather your supplies. We're going to applique all week long. It'll be fun. Um, Anne's got some amazing applique tips once we get sewing. And I like cutting applique with the scan and cut, so I've got this down to a science. Have a lovely Monday, guys. Talk soon.